What's an invention that's still around today but has lost sight of its original purpose? Play-Doh. Was supposed to be a wallpaper cleaner originally. Now it serves as a delicious appetizer. Wait what? MTV. AKA. Music Television. And TLC. Or the Learning Channel. Not a lot of learning happening on that channel these days. Unless you enjoy learning about the daily lives of morbidly obese people. And idiots marrying morons from different countries in a matter of weeks. Don't forget TLC also has plenty of shows about families with way too many children as well as little people. Slinky was originally meant to be used as springs and side sensitive boat devices. Mechanical engineer Richard James invented the Slinky by accident. In 1943. He was working to devise springs that could keep sensitive ship equipment steady at sea. After accidentally knocking some samples off a shelf. He watched in amazement as they gracefully walked down instead of falling. Along with his wife Betty. James developed a plan to turn his invention into the next big novelty toy. Source. National Toy Hall of Fame. History Channel. Discovery Channel. National Geographic Channel. National Geographic still has interesting stuff just not nature stuff. History Channel is conspiracy theories and Discovery Channel alternated from how it's made to car, gold or lobster shows. George Amester used to be a cough cold medicine to help keep mountain climbers in the Alps warm. To be fair. It still can keep you warm and it still tastes like cough cold medicine. Georgia is a big one here. It is actually a Kreuterlika. A kind of bitter alcoholic drink used to aid digestion in small quantities. And used to be seen as a drink for old people until a huge remarketing campaign. Now it's what college students get wasted off of. Melissa just has been the bane of many old women's liver. What do you mean? Granny died cirrhosis. She never drank alcohol. And she always drank a glass of Melissa just for her health. Yeah. Hate to break it to you. But Melissa just has about 79% alcohol. She might not have realized it. But she was an alcoholic. There are several drugs that would make the list. Cocaine and Viagra for sure though. Heroin was originally advertised as an addiction free alternative to opium. Oops. Bubble wrap. It was made to be a texture wallpaper. Wait. Really? Yep. The best man at a wedding was the best swordsman the groom could afford. If anyone objected to the wedding. The best man would duel him. The honeymoon lasted a whole month after the wedding. Where the bride's father would supply the groom with all the meat he could drink. All the meat he could drink. This marriage thing sounds like something I could try. He also defended the bride after the wedding. The wedding didn't really count until the marriage was consummated. So he defended her in the event someone tried to steal her away. Edit. Believe it or not. I learned this from Linus Tech Tips. The WAN. Show. Luke explained he was asked to do this. Also. Because someone pointed out context matters. He defended her from someone who wanted to steal her from the groom and consummate the marriage before the groom had a chance to. Hitachi Magic Wand. It was originally intended as a massager. Hitachi still explicitly sells it as a massager and nothing else. It also gets upset at people claiming it's a sex toy, which is also why they have ceased putting their brand name on it. Hitachi ceased production of the device in 2013 because of concerns about having the company name attached to a sex toy. Vibratex persuaded the company to continue manufacturing it under the name Original Magic Wand, omitting the Hitachi name. In 2014, the company used the name Magic Wand Original. In Wikipedia org link. I love how even the Wikipedia article is like nope. It's a Hitachi magic wand. Edit. Guys. I'm not unaware as to why the wiki page specifies the Hitachi brand. I just think it's funny that they want so badly to distance their brand from the sex market and just can't do it. Then again. If they didn't want to be associated with some of the best sex toys in existence. They shouldn't have advertised a sex toy with an intensity that, and this is not a joke, is measured in horsepower. A dead it. Clarity. Nalgene bottles. 
the plastic water bottles that are popular with hikers campers other outdoor activity folks were originally created for use as medical scientific lab equipment as a lighter shatterproof alternative to glass they're still really good for that in fact my company gets many free samples of Nalgene beakers and bottles from salespeople every year, which I take home and use as dining wear and sports bottles. Yep. I still use them in my lab. Microwave transmitters were originally created to transmit radar signals in World War II. When a worker noticed that being near the transmitter melted a candy bar in his pocket. It led to the development of the microwaves that we use in our homes today. Electric pen by Edison and now tattoo machines. It sure if this is correct but the tattoo artist who did one of my tattoos told me the gun machine has not changed since invented. It's exactly the same since Edison invented it. Edit. So it's not a gun. It's a tattoo machine. My apologies to the artists out there. No foul intended. It's true. Source. I heard that once too. The dashboard. Originally it was a little board of wood used to protect people from mud and debris from when their horse drawn whatever would travel at gallop speeds. Now it gives me information about my vehicle's current state and provides audio entertainment. Super glue. I think it was originally an instant suture in med kits for soldiers in Vietnam. Edit. Holy cow y'all. Thanks for the silver, my first ever. The comments. And the further explanation of what superglue was supposed to be. I based my guess on the hard hat guy swinging from the I-beam commercial. Cyanoacrylate, active ingredient in superglue, is still used as medical glue. You can buy the medical grade stuff on Amazon edit. Since this is getting so much attention. I feel obligated to post a SAR reminding everyone to thoroughly clean and disinfect your wounds before gluing them shut. Edit 2. Thanks for the gold. Any reason I shouldn't just use the regular stuff? I've been using it for years. Viagra. It was invented as a blood pressure medicine. It's still used to treat a form of high blood pressure called pulmonary hypertension in both men and women. It's sold under another name. Revatio. For marketing purposes. Both Viagra and Revatio are the same drug. Sildenafil. My dog has pulmonary hypertension and takes sildenafil three times a day. Paintball guns. They were originally called paintball markers and were invented as a way for loggers and park rangers to mark trees for trimming, cutting down, etc. Without having to walk up to each tree with spray paint or something. A couple of dudes who were using them started shooting at each other for fun and paintball as a sport was born. In fact some people still call them markers to avoid the stigma some associate with the word gun. A couple of dudes who were using them started shooting at each other for fun. That would be literally everyone who was using them started shooting them at each other for fun. I'm sure. TBF. Every time I've gone paintball by I've heard them called markers still. But I didn't know the history. Maybe it's been said already. Coca-Cola and Dr. Pepper were originally marketed as medicine and health tonics. I believe DR. Pepper's original name was something like DR. Pepper's health elixir. Edited for spelling. Second edit. Holy cow. Came back to an amazing conversation. I'm trying to get to everyone's comments. I don't know if I can respond to everyone. But I'll at least leave a like. I'm Brew. A Scottish soft drink popular in the UK, was originally marketed as a health tonic because of the large amount of iron in the drink. In 1949 they had to stop calling it iron brew. Because of restrictions from the government on what could be marketed as having vitamins or minerals. And it became the legally distinct iron brew. Kleenex. Its original purpose was to act as insulation in gas masks during World War I. After the war. Its parent company advertised it as a way to remove makeup. Edit. Added context for when this happened. Edit. Fixed my grammar. You savages. Benadryl was developed as a sleep aid but its antihistamine properties were better. Also. And maybe this has been said. But the pound sign. Started as shorthand for pound weight. Then commonly used in the 80s for voicemail access. 
Now it's used to light fires on social media. Amazon used to sell only books. Today I learned this about their history. In September 1994, Bezos purchased the domain name Relentless.com and briefly considered naming his online store Relentless. But friends told him the name sounded a bit sinister. The domain is still owned by Bezos and still redirects to the retailer. Menstrual pads. They were invented to soak up blood and bullet wounds. After the war Kotox had several hundred tons left over and found that nurses had been using them as feminine hygiene. What did women use before pads were invented? Serious. It varied by time and place. But mostly rags. We get the expression being on the rag because. Well. Women in the 19th century used to do a lot of sewing. And leftover rags or old clothes would get used for cleaning. And the softer ones would be used to soak up menstruation. Around the end of the century companies started selling cloth pads. The Kotox ones I mentioned were revolutionary because they were meant to be disposable rather than washed and reused. We go back further. And. We don't really know. Women didn't do a lot of writing there isn't a lot of writing by women that has survived. And men didn't care to mention it much other than demands for ritual bathing or herbs to keep the smell away. It's likely they did the same. But that's just an educated guess. From Wikipedia. Aspartame. Aspartame was discovered in 1965 by James M. Schlatter. A chemist working for GD. Serland Company. Schlatter had synthesized aspartame as an intermediate step in generating a tetrapeptide of the hormone gastrin. For use in assessing an anti-ulcer drug candidate, 53, he discovered its sweet taste when he licked his finger. Which had become contaminated with aspartame. To lift up a piece of paper, 7, 54, 55. Torina Teris Garin participated in the development of aspartame as an artificial sweetener, 56. This mad lad is licking his fingers in a chemistry lab. SMH. In chemistry lab in college we had to figure out what an unknown chemical substance was by doing a bunch of tests and comparing the results to 6 known substances. Do the same tests on all 7 and compare results. I just tasted a little bit of the unknown and then tasted the 6 controls and was like easy it's the unknown as that one. The TA just shook his head and looked at me like I'm an idiot. I got it right though. Best comment of the day. The high heels on men's boots in Yesteria was originally, to keep the foot from slipping too far into the stirrup, preventing the rider's foot from getting, hung up if the rider was thrown, being dragged to severe injury or death, but was quickly found to be useless, since it was too far back on the foot to prevent the problem. Then it became popular for increasing the height of men, then women, then began being the fashion item they are today.